All right, so tonight we're doing our last presentation for our Astro Health series. Uh, we're going to be looking at forecasting health trends with transits, progressions, and at the end, I'm going to talk a little bit about the eclipses as well, the solar and lunar eclipses, as far as uh, health forecasting trends go. So that's kind of, of what we're, we're digging into this evening. Uh, before we get going, though, I need to read our disclaimers. So let me get this out of the way. All right. Uh, the content provided in this astrology presentation, including all textual material and chart interpretations, is for educational and entertainment purposes only and is not intended to serve as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. I am not a medical practitioner, and I do not offer medical advice or health treatment. The insights and strategies discussed during this session should be taken as medical guidance or applied as a medical solution to any health issue. Participants are encouraged to consult with a qualified health professional regarding any personal health concerns or conditions. Any reliance on the information provided in this session is strictly at your own risk. I do not guarantee the accuracy or efficacy of astrological interpretations in predicting or resolving any health-related issue. By participating in this session, you acknowledge and agree that the session facilitator and organizer are not liable for any direct, indirect, incidental, consequential, or any other damages arising out of or related to your use of or inability to use the information or strategies discussed. The, the, participation, the participation in this presentation is a professional client relationship of any kind between the facilitator and the participant. All astrological counseling provided during the session is intended to support self-awareness and personal growth, not to provide health or medical solutions. Okay, we're through there. Now we can buy. All right, so I will start here um, at the very beginning, just talking about what transits and progressions are, um, because I know we do have a varying level of uh, people who will be watching this and interacting with this information. Um, so basically in astrology, uh, transit and progressions are two primary methods used to forecast future trends, including health related developments, right? So a transit is referring to the movements of the planets in the sky at any given time and their, their alignments with the positions of planets from the time of birth on a natal birth chart. And these moving planets are going to activate parts of natal chart and they're going to indicate periods of change, challenge, growth, in different aspects in different areas of life and one of them is health right uh, a progression is involved in moving the planets and the port and the points on your natal chart forward to mirror your growth and your evolution over time all right and so in a progression a day after birth correlates to a year of life and so it gives us insight into like the internal changes and kind of the phases of life that we experience. And so progressions reveal slower and deeper shifts compared to more immediate influences that transits have. Okay. So those are basically the difference in what we're looking at. All right. So we're going to spend quite a bit of time on transits because, um, Transits are basically like a cosmic weather report and basically how showing it wherever they the current position is of these planets in the sky and how it's interacting with your birth chart that is going to give us a lot of information on what's going on not only in your life in general but in your health and so we are going to be focusing tonight um, kind of putting everything together that we've used and we've learned so far uh, we're going to be looking at the planets and the signs and the houses. We're, of course, going to focus on the first, sixth, eighth, and twelfth houses. And we're going to kind of 
put it all together and kind of figure out how things roll. All right. And so basically we're looking at how the movements of the planets are going to affect our well-being. All right. Because these transiting planets are going to activate health related areas in your chart. They're going to signal times when you need to pay extra attention to different areas of health, or maybe you might need to prepare yourself for like potential stress that could be occurring. Okay, so we're going to start with the transits of the faster moving planets. So we're going to start with Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Okay, because these, because they move faster, their impacts are brief, but sometimes extremely impactful. All right. Um, we're looking at, even though short duration of, occurs, these trigger health-related events, and sometimes they highlight periods of stress or opposite, maybe some extra vitality. It gives them more, where we have more energy or more vitality maybe than we typically would. And they present us with opportunity to either maybe heal an area or to make adjustments in our health routines to kind of balance out the effects that we're going through with each of these different planets, All right? So when we look at the sun and the moon, okay, we've got our luminaries, which we talked about them in detail. The cycle of these two are showing energy and emotion in our lives because the sun is showing us our vitality and the moon is showing us our emotion and things that are going emotion within us. So when we've got the sun transits, you're looking at a few things with the sun. You've got annual cycles, okay? So we know that the sun is going to take a whole year to travel through all 12 zodiac signs. And so as it goes through, it's marking the annual cycles of growth and renewal. And so where the sun is in a transit, this is going to break through some kind of significant point in your chart. It, it will energize and it will illuminate that area. So you have to bring attention to your vitality and kind of your, your identity during that period of time. Okay. So as it changes signs, it's highlighting different areas in your chart. And so we have to look at what the houses and what the sign and what planets are involved in that space to figure out what's going on with you physically and, and with identity. Okay. So with the sun, as it transits, you're looking for, okay, for positives, for energy boosts. You're looking for positive aspects like trines and sextiles because those are gonna bring a boost into your energy and your confidence. And it's gonna be making like, it'll show that when it's in those kinds of um, scenarios in our chart, that it's a, it shows a, an excellent time to try something new in health, okay? So this would be when you want to try something new. Maybe you wanna start a new diet or start a new routine, or you want to change something in your health. These times when it, we've got these sun boosts going on in our health houses, that is when you want to attempt to make those changes. Now, uh, conversely, if you've got a challenging aspect, like a square or an opposition with the sun where it's transiting, it may be coinciding with low energy or maybe something developing, some kind of health concern. And so with that, you want it, we want to encourage you to step back Okay, so when we've got uh, the more challenging aspects going on with our sun, you want to kind of step back and you want to focus more on resting and maybe recuperating than trying to start something new. Okay, when we look at the moon transits, of course, the moon is a monthly cycle. And so the moon is going to change zodiac signs about every two and a half days, right? And then it's going to go through all of them in a month. And so this is really rapid movement. And think about it because it's governing our emotions and kind of our daily moods, okay? So that's why, you know, I always say when we're looking at astrology in general, 
if you've got something going on and it's being triggered by a transit of the moon, it's probably only going to last about two and a half days. So if you're feeling very not okay, just keep reminding yourself it's going to pass because it's not permanent. Okay. We want to look at also new and full moons as far as health goes with our, our lunar cycle. A new moon is a time of new beginnings and of setting those intentions. While a full moon is going to bring culmination to something or maybe a heightened emotion about something. And so if we start watching these phases, it gives us the ability to pinpoint days where we're going to have emotional and physical sensitivity. And it's going to urge us during these new and full moons to pay attention to self-care and emotional needs. Okay. Things that are going to, to cause those emotional fluctuations with our moon transits, we're looking at these fluctuations showing up as they highlight periods where maybe in some signs you're more introspective or in others you might have like unresolved feelings or things that come to impact your mental health. Okay. So like I've found for myself, I have a Taurus moon. Anytime the moon is in Taurus in transit, especially, and it took me a while to kind of put these pieces together. Because the moon is exalt, it's exalted in Taurus. So I have an exalted moon in my natal chart. But when I have a the transiting transit of that Taurus moon on my moon. So when I have my lunar cycle reset, those are usually when I am the most impatient that I can be. Normally, I am the most patient and even heal and easygoing individual there is. But when I have that reset and when I have that Taurus moon in that Taurus transit moon cycle going on, I struggle. It's hard for me. It's, um, and I think it's because, and like I said, I've really given this a lot of thought. I think it's because it's, it's too much of a good thing. My, my, my good exalted moon almost is over the top with that exaltation on top of exaltation. Um, and so I know during that period of every month, that I'm going to struggle for those couple days, that it's not going to be an easy time for me. And so I've actually got to the point now where I prepare for that. I prepare because I know that it might cause me to not get along well. Let's see. I have the Libra moon um, during Libra moon's headache, get hurt. Yes. Yeah, and I have just found that when often when you see your moon return, when you start that lunar, re, you know, because that's when we start a new lunar month, I think of it, I think, and this is my own personal, I can't prove this, um, but this is my belief after having looked at it a lot and studied it in myself and studied it in other people. I think, because you think about it, what is a lunar return? A lunar return is the start of a new lunar cycle. So we're starting a new moon cycle with our lunar. We're starting a new lunar month. So it's balsamic. So you're going to have a day of balsamic moon, which is what? It's where we're discarding and throwing away and getting rid of whatever didn't work well that month. It's closing that month. It's the end of that month. It's like the bringing in, the taking down. And then we're going into the seeding of a new month. So you've got the closure and the seeding all going on here. And we're starting a new 30-day cycle with that moon. And so I think that is very, um, very intense sometimes. Okay. All right. So moving on, we're looking at Mercury, Venus, and Mars because they, again, are, are, are um, very quick transits. They're moving forward quickly. And so basically with Mercury, Venus, Mars, we're looking at mental relational and physical health okay so when we look at the mercury transit 
we're looking at, um, you know, we know Mercury is going to be governing communication and how we think and our mental clarity. And so when you've got Mercury transiting a sensitive point in your chart, it can impact mental health and stress level and often lead to increased mental activity or periods of introspection. Okay. Now, if Mercury retrograde as it is involved in this, okay, so during those Mercury retrograde periods, you might experience disruptions, of course, in communication, but it might result um, health-wise as misunderstandings that can contribute to mental stress. And so when you've got, uh, you know, the Mercury transits, Mercury retrograde in one of the areas of your chart that's heavy in health, um, you're looking at it being a time to slow down and maybe reflect and try to focus on clarity in your thoughts and your interaction. With right. um, when we look at our Venus transits, we're looking at, of course, Venus is love, beauty, harmony. Um, but it, as a transit health-wise, can also signal a time to pay attention to relational health and emotional well-being. Now, a positive Venus transit is going to enhance feelings of pleasure and being connected with people socially. And so it's going to improve, kind of, you're going to feel happy and, you know, be, be very emotionally stable. But when you are looking at um, perhaps a Venus transit that is not necessarily favorable, it's a little more challenging. Maybe we're looking at that square or that opposition again. You're looking at um, possibility of uh, overindulgence. You know, you have to be very mindful of the fact that you could be overindulging during a Venus transit, which would impact physical health. It's important to maintain balance in your diet and in what you're doing, you know, uh, lifestyle-wise, energy-wise, um, to make sure that you're not getting those overindulgences whenever you have those challenges with a Venus transit. Now, when we're looking at the Mars transit, we're looking again at, it's the planet of action, energy, aggression. So during a Mars transit, it could indicate a period of heightened physical activity, but it can also bring in risks of inflammation, of accidents, uh, because we might have a little more impulsivity in our actions, um, or it could um, show some kind of health issue that's related to stress or aggression, okay? So it's really important to be cautious if you're ha having a sensitive transit involving Mars with your natal chart in the area of health because you, it could show that you might be very irritable or very impulsive. And so it's you have to have that caution because you wanna avoid doing something where you might injure yourself or you might do something that would cause a health issue to begin, okay? Now, if we look at our slower moving planet transits, okay, now we're looking at our, at our outer planets. We're looking at Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, all right? So unlike the inner planets, these move really slow through the zodiac. And so because their transits are longer lasting, they're more impactful and their influence is going to signify either a significant shift, perhaps some kind of deep healing or some kind of transformative change that's going to affect us on a more profound level. We're looking at more, more depth in what's going on, right? So if we look at Jupiter, all right, so Jupiter is going to have that growth and expansion in health, all right? Generally speaking, it's most likely optimistic. It's going to be a year long in that zodiac sign that it's in. And so you can kind of look at your chart and look at where it's transiting and look at where it's bringing that expansive energy. And especially in the ways that it might influence health. Okay. Now, you if you've got a transit that is that year long and we're looking at growth phase and success in a health manners, you're looking at possibilities for maybe some healing opportunities. And so we're looking at it bringing maybe a little bit more hope 
in that area or with that part of your body that's being represented by a part of your child. It's making a favorable time for trying maybe some new treatment or some new health routine. And it can lead to improving or healing something that maybe wasn't in the best of situations before Jupiter got to that space, All right? Um, with Jupiter too, of course, it's going to uh, offer us ins inspiration, maybe to look deeper into a health topic that goes along with where it's at in our chart, where it's transiting. Um, it could maybe offer us some kind of educational opportunity or maybe get us engaged in some kind of activity that's going to promote over, you know, well-being in that area of our life, right? Jupiter, again, although it's mostly positive because it has the tendency to expand things, could lead to excess or overindulgence depending upon the aspects that are coming to it and what is aspecting it, All right? So during a Jupiter-influenced area in your chart, you might want to have moderation in that space, okay? Think about ways to maybe avoid potential health issue that would be related to an overconsumption or some kind of lack of discipline in that area. Okay, so basically when Jupiter is in a part of your chart, you're going to use this time to embrace opportunities for growth, and you're going to remain mindful of maintaining balance and moderation to achieve some kind of health benefit that's going to last, right? Because you're going to be, you're going to have the opportunity to begin something new that could be very helpful, right? When we look at Saturn, okay, we know that Saturn is usually about restructuring and discipline in some way, especially if we're talking about health. Okay. And we know that wherever it is, it's going to be there for two to three years okay, in a sign. So it's going to be in that part of your chart for an extended amount of time. And so it's going to give you time to work on the structure, the responsibility, the discipline that goes along with that part of health or wellness for you. Now, when we look at it in a challenging, okay, it in a challenging manner, Saturn is going to require some kind of discipline or responsible approach to health in that area, okay, wherever it is. And so it's going to, there's going to be a time where we're going to have to address some kind of chronic issue or area where you're going to have to build a stronger foundation for long-term well-being. So it's going to show you an area, just like it does in life, it's going to show you an area or a part of you that is going to require some kind of responsible approach to help you strong, make you stronger, have it build a better foundation to build on for long-term well-being in that area, right? Saturn also always tries to teach us patience and perseverance. That's like a huge piece of, uh, of Saturn as well. Not just the challenge, but the idea that you're having to learn um, endurance. And so you might find yourself having to adopt maybe a more systematic or maybe even a more patient approach to achieving some kind of health goal, right? It's going to suggest that you have to have some kind of consistent effort or determination to make a difference in that area, right? And during Saturn transits, there's there's going to be uh, an area, wherever it is, it's going to focus you in on building some kind of solid, sustainable health practice in that space, okay? And so this could involve creating some kind of structured routine or maybe setting some kind of goal that is realistic or making a lifestyle change that's going to support your, your wellness overall long-term, all right? So... Wherever it is that Saturn is transiting, you're going to be looking at taking a long-term approach to something to do with your health and wellness, and you're going to be focused on making some kind of change in that area to promote your resilience and your strength moving forward. Okay. Now, when we look at Uranus transits, we all we know wherever Uranus is, there's a change. Usually, it's a sudden change. Um, perhaps a breakthrough, 
in health, right? So we know that it's been about seven years moving through a sign. So this is a transit that is going to bring, it's going to be a sudden shift or a sudden breakthrough or some kind of disruption in your life that's going to lead to a significant life adjustment, okay? And so think of it as a breakthrough. Let's think about it as a breakthrough. If it's a breakthrough, it could signal like an unexpected change in health. You might experience a breakthrough perhaps that prompts you to try as something new, some new approach to what's been going on that you haven't been able to fix, or maybe an alternative therapy that you've never tried, or maybe it's just something that's brand new that somebody recommended to you or you learned about. It's going to offer some kind of innovation, some kind of solution to a challenge. Okay. Now, if we look at it as far as disruptions and adjustments, okay, so let's look at it from that point of view. Uranus is going to bring forth some kind of positive breakthrough. It's going to disrupt some kind of established routine that you have. So you have to be prepared when Uranus is in a space in the chart to adapt and to make adjustments to accommodate changes in health or lifestyle. Because wherever it is, it's telling you that there's something that you've been doing and you might have done it for a long period of time, but over a seven-year period, you are going to make adjustments and changes to that area of your lifestyle, okay? So right now, it would be that Taurus area. Wherever Taurus is, you've been making some kind of, um, of change. You've either had something unexpected happen or you've, you've had some to make adaptations or adjustments in your life. But over the last seven years, and it should be coming up on a finality now because we're getting ready to move it out of Taurus and into Gemini, you've had something you've been working on, okay? Now, when we're looking at Uranus, the thing you have to remember with Uranus is experimentation, exploration, embracing new ideas, Maybe some technology is involved in that space um, or maybe some treatment that is is different come bringing forth improved health and well-being. Okay. Wherever that Uranus transit is, think of it as an opportunity to embrace some kind of change, explore some new possibility. And you know, you've got to stay open to being adaptable because it's going to require that you adapt whatever is going on in your life. When we look at Neptune, okay, Neptune's shifts are, are more subtle. They're more holistic. They offer a more holistic understanding of your health. Okay. So Neptune is going to spend 14 years in a sign and it's, all about having this subtle influence and it's going to have really gradual shifts in health that requires you to make a holistic change. It's to, all about holistic approaches to things, right? So usually when you've got a Neptune transit, it's going to bring a health issue that is subtle and challenging to diagnose, okay? Its symptoms might be vague, they might be elusive, they might require some deeper understanding of, you know, your mind-body connection to really be able to address them effectively. Neptune is going to encourage exploring the emotional and the spiritual dimensions of health in that area. And you might find yourself drawn to things like meditation energy healing, mindfulness. Again, you're looking at something that's going to change things holistically for you, right? You're going to be looking at doing something that's going to be very uh, integrated. You're going to be trying to integrate something that's going to address a root cause of some health issue. And so you're going to find yourself embracing some kind of therapy or some kind of change that's going to nurture 
all pieces of you, your bo body, your mind, and your spirit, because Neptune is bringing in that holistic nature to solve that health issue. All right. Now, when we look at Pluto transits, all right, and we, we're pretty much closing up one here and just beginning a new one. You know, Pluto, depending on where it is, you're looking at 14 to 30 years. We know the one that's coming is 20 years, okay? That we've, we've dipped our toes in it. We've cut, we're kind of in the process now of backing out for the very last time. And then we're going head in for the next 20 years. So wherever that is, you're looking at transformation and regeneration, okay? It is a very profound, it's, it's, a, it's a deep transformative healing. And it's uh, surfacing, it, you're going to have hidden issues surface that are going to require some kind of resolution for you. So think about the last year, you know, we've had Pluto in there dipping toes. You know, if you look at a year ago from this last spring, it was there for just, a, a you know, a couple months. What what might have, have come up that you noticed in that space? And then it, in the beginning of the year, it came back and it was there. It's, you know, it's been there for a little bit longer. Um, and what what it what was revealed? What did it show you? Um, you know, Pluto brings this brings like light chronic health issues or psychological factors that you might have buried. It's it's going to bring bring them up. And because it moves so slowly, you're going to have a really it's going to bring be a time for deep healing and for really confronting what the underlying causes are of a health concern. This isn't something that, that, you know, this is something that perhaps either you, you knew was there, but you ignored it or something that was hidden from you that you didn't know that has come forth. And so this, it's really bringing forth this, these underlying things that are going to give you information on this health concern. All right. And Pluto's energy really is encouraging transformation. And so you're going to find yourself undergoing this significant change in your health that's going to lead to some kind of regeneration or renewal. And it's going to empower you to embrace this change or this transformation. It's offering you an opportunity, wherever it is, to let go of some old thing, some old pattern, some old habit, and embrace a new healthier way of living to remedy whatever it was, okay? And so you really have to, to dig in and you have to use Pluto's transformative energy to address deep rooted issues that are, you know, and to pursue the healing that's gonna last, to, to make yourself have lasting change, okay? It's giving you that ability to move into something that's gonna offer that lasting change, all right? So when we're analyzing transits for health, the first thing you wanna do is, all right, as I was just talking about, certain transits hold more significance due to their direct influence on the physical body and the emotional state. So the, the you wanna pay, pay really close attention to transits, that are involving your sun, your moon, and your ascendant, okay? These are going to be really directly related to health matters. They're gonna be where you can actually really pinpoint things that are, are going on for your okay? So again, we're looking at when we have the sun transit, you're looking at your vitality, your life force, your energy, all right? You're going to look and try to see what kind of aspects the sun, the transiting sun is forming to your natal planets. And it's going to highlight your energy level and whether it's going to be a boosted energy level or a challenged energy level. Think about it because we're talking about zodiac signs because it changes every month. Is it, are you in a, let's, I'll use um, Leo. Let's use Leo because we're in the Leo phase right now. So Leo, if it's in a sun sign, if you you have a natal Leo sun, if you have, if it's transiting in a sun sign or in a sun sign, in a fire sign, it's going to be a trine. So that's going to be a, a, 
uplifting, positive aspect. If it's going a air sign, it you're again, you're going to have an uplift. So these trines and these sextiles, you're going to have increased energy, increased, confidence, increased motivation. So this is a time for pursuing new health goals, for starting a new fitness fitness regimen, or engaging in things that are going to enhance your well-being. Okay. Now, if it's going through a sun sign, and like I said, you've got Leo. If it, if you've got a Leo sun sign right now, it would be awesome because it's in the same sign. When it's in the air signs or the other fire signs, it's it's a positive, it's a go. But if it's in water sign or in an earth sign, those could be a little more challenging because then we're looking at squares and oppositions, okay? And so they might indicate periods where you are feeling drained or you're facing a health challenge, all right? And so it's really essential when you're in these areas that are not working well with your sign where it's a challenging aspect like a square or an opposition you have to listen to your body you have to take rest if it says to rest you have to be take good care of yourself and try to maintain balance during those months all right when it's not in a in a good happy alignment with your natal sun okay moon transits like we talked about, once a month, two and a half days, it's clicking along, all right? So this is going to be very short term, and it's going to be emotional and physical fluctuations, kind of like what we talked about when we talked about the moon transit, all right? You're going to have days where you might be more sensitive. You're going to have days when you might be tired. You're going to have days when maybe you have to pay a little more attention to your self-care. You have to love yourself and be gentle with yourself more, okay? And so when the moon transits are, you know, are connecting with your natal chart, you will see these shifts in mood and energy. So you have to pay attention to how you feel during these times. Um, and like I said, you can look at the, the elements as it's rolling through. Um, you know, look at your moon. What is your moon sign? That your natal moon sign is going to have an element attached to it. Look at that element and look at the cycle as the moon things go. Some of those are going to be easier for you. Some are going to be harder. That will give you an idea of whether you're going to have something maybe more challenging or something maybe easier, more harmonious. Okay. When you, when you are in a transit that you have identified as a good harmonious time, all right. These would be times when you're going, your emotional well being is going to be stronger. So these would be times when you want to, if you have to do something more emotionally involved, put yourself out. On the challenging ones, this is when we're going to spend more time nurturing ourselves. We're going to spend more time trying to relax, trying to be more introspective. Maybe you don't want to be as social. So you're going to want to be a little more withdrawn, a little more focused on yourself when we have the more challenging days. Okay. Now, when we're looking at the ascendant transits, okay, we talked, we talked, you know, about what goes on with the ascendant and what it means. But when we're looking at it as a transit, um, not as a piece of your chart, but as a transiting, then it's, it's transiting your chart. You're going to be, it symbolizes the physical body, the identity. Um, it's kind of your de your demeanor and how you're presenting yourself to the world that day. And so transits to the ascendant are going to bring changes to how you appear, your self-expression. So as you have transits in, in ascendance, you might you might feel change you need to change your lifestyle. You might wake up and think you need to change your wardrobe. or you may want to change an exercise routine. These are going to bring really heightened awareness to health-related issues and to, to emotion-related issues. And so if you're inspired out of nowhere, or what appears to be nowhere, it's probably not out of nowhere. It might be actually an ascended transit. You might find yourself wanting to have a, a, to adapt some healthier habit, or you might want to address some existing concern, all right? So your ascended transits are basically going to give you, uh, they're going to encourage 
proactive engagement with your well-being in the area where they are, okay? Because there are so many and it's it's a big topic and hard, I did, didn't want to take the time to break them all down. In the uh, slides that I shared, this is a link to a document that goes through transits to every ascendant, all right? To give you ideas of what we're talking about specifically in health, okay? So that is, um, I'll, we'll share the notes for people who came in late. That's there, so you have that, okay? And it's linked into this document. All right, so looking at what we just talked about, identifying key transits for the natal sun, moon, and ascendant, we are now going back to, and I'm so happy to see that she's with us. We have we have Catherine with us, Seaball. Uh, this is the current transits on top of her natal chart, okay? So I'm gonna do with her chart just exactly what I explained we would do. So you could do this with your chart, okay? So basically we're looking at sun, moon, and ascendant to kind of get a little insight into her vitality, her emotional well-being, and how she's expressing herself physically right now, okay? Right at this moment, all right? And we're looking at it as a month. We're looking at it literally as a day. And um, so we're looking at things as we're, as it's happening in, in real time for her. <laughs> and, and she's got her gritted teeth. All right, so let's break this down. All right, so her natal sun. Let's look at her sun first. Let me find my little pen here. All right, so her natal sun and the transiting sun are together, okay? Because um, she has a Leo sun. All right, so the natal sun, of course, you already know because we talked about it in detail, her vitality, her self-expression, her life force, okay? So she has the sun in Leo, that is actually transiting conjunct her natal sun. She's at 13 degrees, it's at 24. So it's still within a, it's just passing out of that 10 degree radius, but it still is in sign, okay? It's a very wide conjunction, but it's still in sign, all right? So we're looking at, this is a time when her personal energy and her self-expression are highlighted. Her vitality is strong. And so this is a good time for her to be doing things that are going to develop herself. All right. This is this is giving her uh, the ability to increase her vitality and to increase her confidence and to try to enhance her self-esteem. Okay. That's what we're looking at if I was just looking at it generally for astrology. But if we dig into the health impl implications, this transit would generally support robust health. Now we're talking about the month because this, this has been from the time it came into Leo to the time it leaves Leo, which is a little, a few, just not too far away. We've got a little bit of time left in the Leo. The, the month of Leo for her would have been when she was finding a little more energy and finding a little more enthusiasm in herself by in by you know through vitality. She has started new health routines. She has started new fitness programs. So she's started new things that she's going to be carrying forward. Okay. Now the moon, all right, her natal moon is in Taurus. All right. We've got the natal moon in Taurus right here. Okay. And her natal moon in Taurus. As Uranus transit transiting it currently. Okay. And the transiting moon is in her first house in Capricorn. Okay. So let's kind of look at how these things are going to, to encourage each other. All right. So we're looking at, we know, okay, she's got, because we were just talking about it. She has the an Earth moon. Because she has a Taurus moon. The moon is in an Earth sign. That means it's trining. So that's good. Okay, this is a harmonious aspect for her. So she has the ability to have some emotional stability going on. And she's 
uh, feeling a little more grounded perhaps than she was a few days ago when it was in fire, all right? And she's getting ready for it to move into Aquarius, which is going to be an air sign, which again is going to be a little bit tenser for her, okay? But right now, at this moment, it's in an air sign. So health-wise, this is a time for her to be nurturing herself, her body and her soul, trying to do relaxation and have emotional balance. All right. She is emotion more. She is a stable at this time. So she has to do something. This would be a time when it's a little easier for her to handle things emotionally, be a little more patient, a little more pragmatic. Okay. So this is a, this is a favorable time for her as far as where her moon is today. And, and yesterday, all right? We're looking at also here um, because I want to look at a little bit of what's going on with things. Um, she's got the transiting Pluto is right here. Um, and that moon is going to be coming into it, okay? And so as that moon runs into that Taurus, all right, in the next, well, very shortly, because we've got the the, the um, full moon coming, and it's going to be in Aquarius. Um, as it As it starts coming together for her, as that transit starts, she's going to have a pile up there, and that is coming off of her sun, off of her moon at a at a little bit of a challenging aspect. It's 135 degrees there. She's going to be looking at a um a sesqua quadrate. So that's going to be a little challenging for her. So when full comes Monday, Tuesday, beginning of next week, for her, she's going to have a little subconscious emotional issues coming up. All right. She's going to have to kind of look at maybe a little bit of fear. She might have a little fear involved, maybe needing to transform things. She could have some stress-related health issues. So she's really got to lean into that self-care and engage in those therapeutic activities that she's been using to navigate whatever uh, Pluto has led her into thus far. All right. Um Catherine, can I share a little bit about what you've you've been going through the last few months? Because I don't want to share. Yes, okay. Um, let's see, it's been about three months ago now. It would have happened the end of, of May. Um, Catherine injured herself. She injured her back. She ruptured three of her discs in her lower back. Okay. And she has spent the entire summer, she has spent June, July, and August going through intensive rehabilitative um, therapy with a chiropractor to um, reduce those uh, discs and bring them back in within the spinal column so that she could start regaining strength so that she could continue back to work when we go back to work here shortly. She is a teacher. She's had the summer off like I have. And um, so she's been through a lot. I mean, a lot this summer. She went from not being able to move and in extreme pain to very gradually gaining momentum the last few weeks with the sun in Leo. She started um, being able to have more and more vitality to her movements. Um, when this last week she went through some situations where she uh when it while the moon was in um Sagittarius she kind of learned that it was going to be maybe a little bit more difficult for her to go back to work than she had thought you're looking at a stressful thing there so emotionally she was a little bit uh it was a little harder for her but now it's it's she's coming back she's reading it getting things going um, some of that might be that uh, Mercury in retrograde in Leo that's affecting her thoughts on this. Um, but she's been through a lot the last few months. 
And if you think about where the sun has been and whether those have been harmonious or not harmonious areas for her chart and what she's been going through, you can kind of see in her out. Um, if we see ascendant here quickly, um, it is in Capricorn currently as well. So her ascendant is where her ascendant is naturally today. And so we're looking at um, that coming through as uh, her focusing on renewing herself, basically. It's, it's just a good time for her to release um, you know, habits that she's had that maybe didn't help her health wise and embrace the changes that she's made to foster more well-being. All right. Because she's she's back to the point of having to present herself to the world. And so she's she's trying to to go about her her new redefined personal goals and appearance because she has things that she's had to change in herself physically to make adaptations for what she's gone through in her health. Um, yes, her solar return chart definitely would. Yes, that gives you kind of an overall, you can use the same process with a return chart, just as you do with this. When we look at her progression, that's gonna give you a little bit more idea too of what to do with the return chart. But yes, you want to, um, you want to look at the solar return chart as offering indications, just like it does for the theme and the energy of a coming year, theme and energy of a coming year's health, okay? So it's giving you that year's point of view, okay? All right, so let's dig a little deeper, all right? So we, we, we've scratched our surface there. Now, the next stage is we want to identify the rulers of the transiting houses 1, 6, 8, and 12, okay? Now, each house in a natal chart begins a specific degree of the zodiac sign. We know this. It's a house cusp. And the first step in identifying the ruler of a house is to look at the zodiac sign that's on the cusp of the house in question, okay? So, of course, we're looking at our the health houses. Our first house is the ascendant. So it's going to give us physical appearance, physical identity, personal identity, how you approach life, you know, how you approach health, okay? Sixth house we're looking at health, daily routine. It's going to reflect your habits, your home work environment, your how it impacts your well-being. That eighth house cusp, we're looking at transformation, regeneration. Um, it's, you're going to be looking at cycles of change and deep emotional processes. That 12th house cusp, this is going to be looking at subconscious, spirituality, hidden health aspects, um, introspection, maybe psychological things. It's also, we know, the realm of dreams and unseen influences, okay? So we have to find the ruling planet of the sign, okay? So once we've identified the sign, on the house cusp, then we have to determine the ruling planet of that sign, okay? And so each zodiac sign has a planetary ruler. All right, we, we know this, I'm hoping. Um, if we don't, because there may be some that haven't, I have linked here a, uh, a document that has all of the traditional planetary rulerships and the modern ones also add it in so you have all of the rulerships so that if you've not done this you can find those ruling planets okay so uh quickly just in case we're looking at uh aries is ruled by mars taurus is venus gemini is mercury cancer is moon uh leo is sun virgo is mercury libra is venus Scorpio, traditionally Mars, modern Pluto. Sagittarius is Jupiter. Capricorn is Saturn. 
Uh, Aquarius is traditional Saturn, uh, modern Uranus. Uh, Neptune is Pisces. Um, let's see. My brain just went. Uh, Pisces is Neptune, modern Jupiter, traditional. So those are the signs and the ruling planets that go with them. Okay. All right. Now, this is where it gets important. So you've looked at your transiting houses. All right. You know what signs the transiting houses are in. You've figured out what rulers those planets are. Now, you have to locate the ruling planet for those houses in the natal chart, okay? So after you identify the ruling planet of the sign on the house cusp, locate where that planet is in the natal chart, all right? So let's, let me show you how this works, okay? So again, we have Catherine's chart. We've got her on the inside. We've got the transit on the outside. For now, and we're going to we're going to look at these different houses and the planets that rule them to give more insight into the areas of life that are affected by these transits and their connection to the health and well-being. Okay. So, if we look at her first house, the first house is. Capricorn. That is where the ascendant is currently. First house is Capricorn. All right. It is ruled by Saturn. So I want to go find her Saturn. All right. And her Saturn is right here. Okay. So what does that tell me? All right. There's a couple things that come there. All right. So we've got the Saturn in the chart which is here in Pisces. Okay, we're putting all of our pieces together. The current transit of Saturn is in Pisces in her third house, okay? Her natal Saturn is in Taurus in the fifth house, okay? So Saturn's transit through Pisces is bringing a focus the spiritual and emotional healing for her, all right, in area of that third house, all right? So her health implications, looking at where her Saturn is in the fifth house, is it's telling us that she is in the process right now of building a strong foundation for some kind of health practice that's bringing discipline into her daily routine to increase her structure, her bones, her structural self, all right? So we're looking at that is what's happening with her first house ruler, okay? Now we look at her sixth house ruler, which is Mercury. Okay. So we've got Mercury, right? Mercury is currently transiting in Leo. Okay. So her sixth house is Gemini and her, which is Mercury. So we're going to go look at the transiting Mercury and at her Mercury, which happened at this moment to be together. Um, they are both in Leo, uh, almost conjunct. So this is a Mercury conjunction, conjunction with another Mercury. So this is suggesting at this moment, she's got really good clarity to her ability to communicate and make decisions for her health. All right. And this is an ideal time for her to reassess her health routines 
and to make sure that what she's doing is stimulating her mental and physical agility in her environment to make sure she has that vitality coming forth because it's in her in that sun sign in Leo. All right. Let's look at that eighth house. Okay. This is important because she's got that eighth house going on there in Leo. Her son is in the house with that transit. Okay. And so because it's in its own sign right now, she has, again, we just talked about it. This has been a really potent time since this month for her to uh, have some regenerative health practices begin and for her to explore these really deep personal transformations. Exactly, Carla. This is a time for her to learn some new things that have to do with her health. And it's it, I, I, I double circled that sun because that sun is like bam, bam. Because if we look at the eighth house, the eighth house is in Leo. It's ruled by the sun, which is her sun. So she's got like a super emphasis right now at this moment on the energy of the sun, giving her the ability to have those that regenerative health practices being developed in her life right now. She went to a nutritionist yesterday and learned a lot. Exactly. Okay. So you see this kind of coming forth in her chart. All right. And now we have to look at the 12th house, of course. 12th house for her is Sagittarius, which is ruled by Jupiter. Okay. Jupiter is in her natal chart here in uh, Libra. So we're looking at the transiting one. Where'd it go? The transiting Jupiter is here. Okay. Which is Gemini. Okay. Her Gemini is her Mercury. Um, Gemini is also uh, for her highlights Jupiter, which is Sagittarius. So she's got a lot of things going on here. We've got Gemini and Libra activated here, and they're both trining, which is nice. Her Jupiter is trining the transiting Jupiter. That's a nice, that's a good, good positive thing going on there. So this is a good time for her to be expanding. Okay. It, she's, she's feeling inspired. She's seeking ways to support her mental and emotional health. All right. She's got that Jupiter Mars transit linked in to that. She's making those changes, those positive changes in her body, in her sixth house. Okay. So you've got that energy rolling in there. Okay. Um, if we're looking at where Jupiter rules, Jupiter rules the 12th house. You've got that Mars working internally for her because it's activating her Mars. Okay. So you've got a lot of internal energy there giving her the chance to grow within to bring about the changes that she has to, to do what she needs to do with her body in her daily routine. Okay. All right. Next thing we have to do. All right. I want to uh, quickly kind of go through um, looking at if a ruler of the first house is transiting, what, how to look at it. Okay, we're going to kind of look through these quickly. Um, so the if we're looking at a transit to the ruler of the first house, again, we're looking at um, vitality, um, how you're asserting yourself in health matters and physical appearance, okay? All right. And a transit is to the ruler of the first house. This brings significant focus to this area, okay? So you're go it's going to be influencing how you feel about yourself, 
and how you navigate health and challenges and opportunities. All right. So the important things when you've got a transit to the ruler of the first house, all right, you're going to have a noticeable effect on your energy level and your physical vitality. If it's a supportive challenge, a supportive challenge, a supportive transit, it's going to boost your energy and your confidence. If it's a challenging transit, it could signal a time for rest or self-care. Okay. If we're looking at it, how it's going, governing your health, as far as how you are presenting yourself, your experience, right? A transit there might inspire you to change how you look or how you're expressing yourself physically, right? It might make you start a new health routine. It might make you make some kind of lifestyle change, okay? If it's a challenging transit, it might trigger some kind of insecurity related to how you perceive yourself or your self-worth or how others perceive you. It could manifest as a doubt of your self-worth, or maybe it might think you make you feel like you're not, not attractive or you aren't, aren't very capable. It's kind of a time when you might feel pressure to conform to societal expectations, okay? or face some kind of criticism that affects your self-esteem. It might be a time where you're really focused on your physical body, like what you weigh or what your skin looks like or it, how fit you are, right? It could, you know, it could offer an opportunity to reflect on whether these concerns that are coming forth are rooted in the genuine need to change your self-care or in some kind of external pressure that you have going on, right? Challenging transits in this area can make you feel physically depleted. Uh, it might make you uh, pay closer attention to what your body is telling you it needs. It'll be a time maybe where you have to be very mindful of your health and practice the, you know, with caution and care what you've got going on. Now, if we've got something harmonious going on, if you've got a nice trine or a nice sextile to that first house, it might give you a wave of positive energy. It might give you a wave of vitality, give you some enthusiasm and some, you know, that growth. It could, you know, be very positive. Um, you know, it might just make you feel more alive, and motivated to take on something new. It might give you, uh, you know, you might feel more comfortable in your skin than maybe you often do. You might feel yourself radiating which attracts opportunities and, and good interactions into your realm. You know, it, it's, it might be a time when you really want to focus on that self-care and, uh, and, and trying to align to your true self, okay? It could be a time when you adopt some kind of habit or something that's going to bring maybe a more long-term thing into yourself, into your well-being. Okay. Transits to the sixth house. All right. So when you have a planet and it's transit being ruler of the sixth house, this can signify uh, a big influence on health habits and lifestyle. Okay. So um, the key things during this time, you will. You might find yourself reassessing your daily routine, how they impact your health. Um, you might ask yourself questions like, are your habits supporting your well-being? Are these areas that need improvement? Um, this might be a time where you focus on creating healthier patterns, implementing changes that support your physical and mental health. Um, this might be a time that could highlight connection between your work environment and your health that work-life balance, because it's the sixth house. Um, you might ask yourself questions like, uh, are you feeling stressed or overworked? Okay, you're looking for that balance between productivity and self-care. Um, it might be when you feel a really strong desire uh, to help other people and or to encourage or engage in something that supports your health 
and others. It's a time when you might seek out therapy or start an exercise regime or start some new diet that's going to make you more healthy. Okay. So if you've got a challenging aspect to the sixth house ruler, you're looking at um, something in your life is going to require change or improvement. Basically, it's going to bring it out. All right. Um, and typically it's going to be marked by a harder aspect like a square or opposition, maybe a conjunction, okay? Because conjunction can go either way, all right? Yes, health of a pet. Yes, that you are correct. Sixth house could be health of a pet as well, all right? Um, it could challenge you to maybe get rid of some kind of habit or routine that has been really not good for your health. Um, you might have a realization that maybe you have a poor diet or you're not getting enough exercise or you might not be getting enough sleep. It might, something might come out, some unhealthy thing that you've got going on that you need to, to work on. It might bring out that you are expressing or you are experiencing uh, workplace stress. You might realize that you're overworked or that you're in a really toxic work culture or that you're just plain burnt out. You know, you might find yourself having like pressure, conflict at work. And that really takes a toll on our physical and mental health. All right. Again, that's if it's a challenging transit. Uh, so, you know, it's, it, you might be more success, susceptible to an illness or something that comes from stress related symptoms. Or you might have a chronic health issue that maybe you've neglected that kind of brings itself out saying, excuse me, I need you to pay attention to me right now. You have it and I need I need you to focus on me. Okay. Now, if we're looking at things that are more supportive, you know, more harmonious, our trines, our sextiles. Now, the, these transits to your ruler of your sixth house would be a positive. So we're looking at uh, a renewed sense of motivation or enthusiasm to have, to have health. All right. Um, it might give you, uh, again, you might start something new, you know, be a new fitness, new nutritional change, a new activity, a new routine. It could be anything of that nature. Um, this is a time when you will actually have enhanced ability to stick with any goals you set for yourself. And it will make positive habits come more naturally to give you, make it easier for you to form that healthier lifestyle. Um, if we're looking at it from workplace context, if it's a supportive transit, you can have harmony and productivity. You know, it could make you have increased job satisfaction, might give you the ability to have career growth that positively impacts your health. All right, so those are positives that go on. All right. I want to focus on Neptune transiting the ruler of the sixth house because this is important. Okay. All right. Neptune is planet of dreams, illusions, dissolution, um, confusion. It, it has the ability, it usually blurs things. You know, you have those, that blur between reality and imagination and this significantly impacts areas of life governed by sixth house. Okay, and so as Neptune moves through its transit, you may find yourself navigating really foggy space where you have, where clarity is really elusive and where your intuition becomes a, your guide. Extreme, extreme value comes forth in your ability to have intuition because of the fogginess and the confusion. Okay, so... The themes that you have when you have a Neptune transiting the sixth house, um, you you might influence heightens heightens sensitivity to the world around you. All right, you might notice that your body is more reactive to substances, things you're eating, things you're drinking, things you're taking, uh, more reactive to your environment, uh, more reactive emotionally. Okay, you're looking at you might have an increased sensitivity that could come through as an allergy or a food intolerance or some psychosomatic symptom 
that's a reflection of emotional stress, right? When you have this kind of transit going on, it's essential to pay attention to the cues that your body is sending you. Again, intuition becomes extremely important, all right? You want to be mindful of what your body is saying. You want to be mindful to your surroundings, mindful to your health. You want to practice listening to what your body says you need and responding to what your body says you need by being gentle to it and nurturing it wherever it says it needs to have nurturing. As you become more attuned to what's going on, you, you have the ability to shield yourself from things that are going to overwhelm you. So this is a time when you might have to have some kind of grounding exercises, or you might need to spend more time in nature than you find yourself normally, because you're trying to recharge and recalibrate all the time, because you've got that Neptune transiting the ruler of your sixth house. Okay. So you've got energy there that you're trying to balance. All right. This also is a time where you have to embrace the unknown. All right. A Neptune transit is going to give you, it's going to make things difficult and complicated when it comes to diagnosing things that are going on because your symptoms are going to be vague and they're going to be misleading. So you're going to find Traditional medical approaches may not give you clear answers. And so you might wind up seeking alternative methods or alternative treatments, more holistic treatments to, to solve issues or to find out what a, a diagnosis truly is. Okay. You might find yourself exploring alternative health practices. You know, you might see more yoga in your life, more Reiki, more herbal remedies, um, you know, more holistic medications um, and med medical treatments, um, you know, things that are not considered And so basically Neptune is encouraging you to broaden your understanding of your he health and, and healing, right? You might find that Neptune in general, when it's transiting is kind of a is one that has a tendency to dissolve structures. And so you might find that if you're having this transit, that it is that you have to discipline your daily routine because you're going to begin feeling, let me see how I explain this. Okay. You're gonna struggle to find, if you have some kind of rigidity in your, in your, in your normal habits or some kind of restrictiveness, in your normal habits, you may find yourself breaking free from that because you're, it's that Neptune energy is wanting you to loosen your usual health practice, all right? So it will lead you to be more flexible and more flowing in what you're doing. It will um, want you to, um, it, will, it will lead you to having desire to maybe have some escapism, okay? So it may, lead you to overindulgence in food, alcohol, other things. And so it's really important if you are having this transit to uh, be mindful of the tendencies and seek balance and clarity in your daily life. Okay. And it will, it's really important to be flexible and flowing if this is a transit that you're experiencing because you have to adapt to the changing circumstances so you're going to have to create a health routine that's going to be more aligned with what intuitively you're being told than perhaps the one that you have set up for yourself in a more structured manner. So you're, you're, you're aligning with more of your intuition. Okay. All right. Um, transits to the ruler of the eighth house. Okay. So when a planet transits the ruler of the eighth house, it's going to bring significant changes and challenges. And it's going to require you to dive really deep into your psyche and your physical health. Okay. So transits that are, are to the ruler of your eighth house are going to, um, they're going to bring a time for you where you're going to confront any underlying emotional or psychological issues 
that might be affecting your well-being. And this eighth house is also going to involve sharing resources and partnerships because that's what the eighth house does. So as far as health goes, you it, this can impact your health through maybe financial financial stress or support, considering how your relationships and your financial situation might influence your wellness journey. Okay. Also, this is a right regeneration house, so a transit to it might um, affect and offer some deep healing or some renewal within you. And so this is really a time to embrace those therapies uh, that are going to give you emotional support or physical transformation. Okay? Challenging in this area are going to bring something to a surface. Okay, It's going to bring up some kind of fear or some kind of trauma that's going to have to be healed. And so, although this is a difficult thing, it's really, as with most things that are challenging, it's going to offer you the chance if you face that fear to have growth and liberation from whatever that hidden issue was that has come up. Now, looking at it supportively, it's going to help. It's going to facilitate those deep healing processes and enhance your ability to transform your health and life. And so this would be, if you've got, if you're, if uh, this is occurring with a harmonious aspect, this is giving you the ability to, you know, uh, explore new ways of regenerating and revitalizing um, and finding that balance between the mind and the body. Okay. So if we're looking at the eighth with uh, Pluto, I want to dive a little deeper here into Pluto. If Pluto is transiting the ruler of the eighth house, okay, this is really brings this is brings in a really potent force for change, and it's going to urge us to confront really challenging aspects of our health and our personal growth. Okay, so basically, what this if you dig into this, what it means is. It's going to unearth some deep-seated issue, okay? It's going to bring some hidden psychological issue that may be impacting your physical health forward. And so you might find yourself engaging in some kind of really intense therapeutic process to heal this past trauma or this past wound that you're working through. And this can be a physical or an emotional wound, okay? Um, an example of this could be, um, let's see, let's, okay, let's say you figure, you found out you have this aspect and you found out that you have some unresolved emotional stress from childhood and it's been causing you some kind of anxiety. This transit is going to encourage you to dig real deeply and to confront this, this issue, this unresolved stress head on and that is going to lead to you having an emotional or psychological renewal the thing you have to remember is pluto transits are long so this is not a sudden here it is it just happened but this is indicating that you're going to be working on this process for this for a length of time to create this profound this big renewal within you all right um, when you have this kind of aspect, this is a really good time to bring in something therapeutic. It could be a therapist, you know, could be an alternative therapist, could be a, a healer, you know, a modern medicine therapist, could be a counselor, could be a coach, you know, a, a, could be a life coach, could be a lots of different things, but it's, you're in the you're it they you want them to help you work through this trauma or this sh this shadow that you've got or this psychological thing that needs healed or you know something that you you you're bringing forth okay some something that's going to give you the ability to facilitate this healing that's going going on within you you're going to want to embrace um mortality okay i think this is one of the most daunting 
aspects of when you've got Pluto transiting that eighth house or eighth house ruler, you're confronting mortality. And so you're looking at, um, it could have, it could, you could experience some kind of personal health scare or maybe the illness of somebody you love, or you might experience uh, going through or, or having some kind of in encounter with someone else is death. Okay. So um, if you think about it, uh, things like this, you know, like you might experience a health crisis that forces you to reevaluate your lifestyle or your priorities, or you might witness maybe the passing of somebody very close to you. And that might prompt really deep reflections on the nature of life and death within you. You know, you might bring forth those, those thoughts, things you really need to think about, look through. Um, this also will bring forth um, new students to something. So if you've got some kind of chronic health, chronic health issue that you have, have worked on and worked on and worked on, this transit might be the turning point for it. And so you might discover something brand new, some, you know, amazing thing that is going to give you hope, or maybe you didn't have any hope before. Um, you know, imagine maybe finding an alternative treatment or, you know, that finally brings relief after you've had years of, of you know, conventional things failing and you it, it didn't make you any better. Or maybe you, out of the blue, come up with some new dietary approach to dealing with something that you've had really issues with. All of a sudden, they start improving for you, okay? So... You know, you just want to remember that this is a, going to be an integration of your mind, your body, and your spirit. If the, you are having this transit, it's a holistic healing experience, all right? So you're going to, you're going to be drawn to things that address your whole person rather than just a symptom or, you know, either mental symptom or physical symptom. You're going to be looking at your whole person. And so you're going to be integrating spiritual healing things with conventional things and, and with, you know, all different sorts of things, because you're looking at the overall well-being of you. All right. It's really, if you're, if you have this sort of transit, this is the opportunity to explore healing modalities that resonate really deep within you to kind of bring that balance and that harmony in your health. All right, and transiting transits to the ruler of the 12th, okay? So if you've got a planet that's in transit to the ruler of your 12th house, this can bring about um, mental and spiritual health, okay? So basically what you're seeing if you've got a transit here is it's gonna highlight the importance of addressing your spiritual and emotional well-being. It's gonna be a time to explore um, more deeply things, you know, your psyche, your subconscious, and how these are affecting your physical health, All right? You might feel drawn to maybe solitude or introspection during this. If you are having this transit, it might cause you to um, literally retreat, go to a retreat um, for self-reflection, or maybe it might just have you retreat within your home or in with a space that's, that's for you. Um, you know, you might find yourself um, retreating and, um, you know, looking at it yourself and addressing underlying issues. Um, this could bring out some hidden health issue, all right? It might bring out a, a symptom or something that you've overlooked and all of a sudden, bam, there it is. So this, again, trust your intuition. If your body is saying you you might have something going on and you're having this kind of trans 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 action transition going on in your chart, look at it. It's important. Okay. When we are looking at um, challenging transits with the twelfth house, this would be most likely of fear. Or health concern that you have to rose. Okay. And this is an opportunity to really 
dig in and face this challenge, you know, uh, with compassion and with understanding. You've got to, you're trying to pave a way to heal it. Now, if you're if you're having a, a harmonious transit, a supportive transit, this would be an enhancement of your spiritual and emotional well-being, giving you, um, you know, the desire to improve your overall health or embrace practices that support things you already have going on that that give you those those balance and that you know that wholeness to you all right um an important transit to this one is mercury all right so let's talk briefly about mercury transiting the ruler of the 12th house so when we when mercury is it enters this realm, this 12th house realm, all right? If we think about Mercury as a, as a planet, of course, it's communication and thought processes and communicate and, and information exchange. It's like this bridge that connects our conscious with our subconscious mind. And so if you're thinking about it in this kind of transit, we're looking and it's transiting the 12th house or transiting the ruler of the 12th house. You're looking at, something that's going to be associated with hidden subconscious um, it's an area of life that's beneath the surface and so when mercury enters this space it's going to invite you to really start digging in to these deeper connections between your mental health and these hidden facets of your well of your being okay it's going to illuminate subconscious patterns okay you're going to see it shed light on something subconscious, um, be it a pattern or a belief that may have been silently influencing your health. So this is like a time of awakening where you become more conscious of how some negative self-talk or maybe some suppressed emotion or some unresolved trauma is manifesting itself physically. Okay. Um, it's going to give you the ability to tap into inner wisdom that's going to heighten your intuition which is going to give you deeper insight into your mind and your overall health so it will help you it will give you the ability to uh to bring yourself into things that are going to foster more self-awareness and understanding things like psychotherapy or journaling or meditation Things of that nature that are going to give you the ability to 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 dig in more intuitively to your psyche. Um, it's going to um, bring light to issues, right? It's going to bring like uh, give you the ability to analyze and discover uh, things that give you the ability to diagnose or recognize something that maybe have was hidden that it gives you the ability to uncover some connection between that health and that physical uh, health that were not apparent before. Okay. Uh, examples: If maybe you have chronic fatigue, and so you, you realize that it's linked to some nutritional deficiency that you had never thought about, or maybe you have this persistent ailment that you realize is attached to some emotional stress. And so these, by discovering these links, you become more effective in how you are treating these. And so you heal, okay? All right. So I brought transits together there. Now let's dip into progressions when we're looking at health forecasting, okay? Now, looking at progressions in general, all right, we know that it's a predictive astrology tool. Uh, it gives us insight into the evolution of our personal narrative, which includes our health. Um, unlike the trans, you know, the transitory nature of a transit, um, you know, because they're always moving, those planets never stop. Progressions unfold over longer periods of time. And so they reflect our growth and our internal change. Okay. So when we're looking at a secondary progression, as far as health, we're looking at the sun, the moon, and the ascendant 
And we're looking at their shifts signifying our vitality, our emotional well-being, and our overall life path. And that includes what kind of health developments we're having. Okay. So... When we look at these progressions, all right, um, progressions of the sun, the moon, and the ascendant are pivotal because they mark periods of personal development and transformation, basically. When the progress point changes signs or makes an exact aspect to a natal planet, this indicates a shift that is going to deeply impact your health and your lifestyle. Okay, so when we look at the progress, all right, um, okay, let's say when the progress sun changes signs, it's going to signal a shift in focus and energy. So let's say it goes from Capricorn to Aquarius, all right, that is going to show a transition in your approach from being very disciplined and structured to being more innovative and social. And so this shift could inspire changes in health routines that align with maybe a more communal or forward-thinking lifestyle. So this progressed sun could highlight maybe some new priority in health, prompting you to adopt some practice or effect on your evolving identity and your values. Okay, based on that shift from, from Capricorn to Aquarius. All right, so let's sit, talk about the moon. So we've got our progress moon. All right, so let's say you've got your progress moon and you've got a square. Okay, your progressed moon is squaring your natal Mars. So this would bring a phase of emotional tension or heightened sensitivity that could that could potentially manifest as some physical symptom, like you might start having headaches or you might start feeling really fatigued. And so this would be a time to pay attention to stress management and self-care, right? When we look at the moon's progressions, they're gonna be linked to emotional cycles. And so they're gonna influence how you manage stress, how you're managing your emotions and how you're managing your physical health. Okay. When we looked at that progressed ascendant, your if you let's use example. Okay, you've got a uh, progressed ascendant, and it's going from Pisces to Aries. Okay, so this might you might have an experiencing uh, like a surge of energy and assertiveness, and you're going to be prompted to be more proactive in health and fitness. This shift would like maybe encourage you to take initiative in health-related things and start maybe a new exercise regimen or start asserting some boundaries maybe for yourself that you didn't have before that give you more self-care and make you feel more strong in a, in a, in a positive. Um, the changes in your ascendant are going to alter how you present yourself and how you're interacting with the world. And so they're going to lead to adjustments in your health routine and your lifestyle choices, okay? So, I wanna talk briefly before I move through the, the different progressions. Um, when we look at the progressive moon, the phase is very important, okay? So if you've got your, a progressed new moon phase. Okay, so if your progressed is a new moon, it's in the new moon phase, when the progressed moon is basically conjuncting that natal sun, you're going to feel more refreshed. You're going to feel an urge to start new. And this phase is going to be feel very much like a river. It's going to symbolize a fresh beginning in, in a life area which is going to include your health. And so this is going to be a time to initiate a health regime or start something new, be it a, you know, fitness or diet or, you know, maybe overcome some past illness. 
This is going to be the energy of that new moon. So it's going to support renewing or planting seeds of future growth. Okay. Just like a new moon would in with your natal chart as you're going or is in a transit scenario or in a, in a progression, we're looking at that new moon phase. Okay. So when we're at a progressed full moon stage, all right, that is going to be opposite of the new moon. That is going to be a time of culmination, right? So it's going to be a time when you see the results of something you started or where you have to make an adjustment based on what's been revealed to you. Okay. And so when we're looking at it from a health point, we're going to be evaluating our health practices. You're going to be identifying things that are working really good. And you're also going to be identifying possibly something that's lingering. Right. So this would be the point when it's going to be encouraging you to reflect and make adjustments so that you, you have continued well-being. All right. Now, it's important to pay attention to the house cusps in general when we're talking progressions, because as they shift, your life focus is going to shift. And so progress planets change houses. The areas of life that they activate shift. And so it's going to offer a new opportunity and a challenge in the health and well-being in that space. And so this change can signify transitions in focus and energy that's going to impact your daily routine and your lifestyle choices. Okay. So if we look at a progressed planet entering the sixth house, we're looking at, um, let's use Venus as an example. So let's say your progressed Venus moves into the sixth, into your sixth house. Okay. It's going to bring a focus on wellness routines and diet, and, and it's going to probably have you address work-related stress, right? It, it's going to have you feel drawn to incorporate beauty and harmony into your health. So you might explore things maybe that are more aesthetically appealing, or it might have you bring things into your environment that bring that aesthetic uh, calmness or well-being into you. It might have you nourishing your body with something that is more balanced. Okay. So basically, when you have a progress planet go into a, the sixth house, it's going to have a emphasis. Your theme is going to change. So it's going to give you a review of your daily habits and your routines, and it's going to go with enhanced well-being and productivity. Okay. Um, when you have, um, when you have a planet, uh, progress into the first house, okay, it's, it's into that ascendant space. Let's say Mercury is the one that progressed into your first house. Okay. So it's going to bring your focus on, uh, communication about health, or maybe you advocating for yourself in a healthcare setting. Maybe you're finally afraid, not afraid to say something you've needed to say or, or, or go after something you needed to go after in the healthcare arena. This also would encourage you to, anytime you have this, this first house progress plan movement, it, this is going to encourage a renewed sense of self-awareness, okay? How you take care of yourself physically and mentally, okay? It, you're, you're gonna see those, those progressions and those changes, okay? So when we look at the sun progression, okay, I'm gonna focus in heavily on the sun. We're gonna focus heavy sun, moon, and ascend it uh, quickly. Um, we're looking at the sun, when you have a sun progression, you're looking at a couple big themes. It's evolving identity and life purpose. Okay, we know that. And so you're going to, it's going, you're going to have a 30 year span when it changes into a new sign. So as it changes into a new sign, this is going to be you aligning 
yourself with a new direction, maybe some new goals, things that are going to start resonating within your true self. Okay. So when we're looking at, let's say, um, a sun progression from Leo to Virgo, okay, it's going to highlight like a shift in health focus. And so if it's moving into that Virgo, it's going to have, you're going to be more emphasized on health and wellness. You might, it might make you have really a lot of interest in nutrition and exercise and being holistically healthy than what it was before. Okay. I went through that shift. Uh, I'm in my third year now. And I do see that occurring with me. And of course, the deeper you get into it, the, the more, um, the more you see that transformation. Okay. When we are um, looking at sign changes with the sun, you're looking at, uh, like I said, every, you're going to look at the sign and it's going to bring in its unique qualities and its challenges. And that's going to help shape how you are expressing your vitality and managing your well being. Okay. Now, when we look at the moon, sessions um it progresses a little quicker you know it's you're looking at like two and a half ish years in each sign in each area so um as it shifts you're 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 finding changes in your emotional needs all right it's it's bringing in uh the unique qualities and challenges that go with the new sign that are going to shape how you are connecting with your emotions and how they address your needs so again, this is going to be changing every few years. And this we will do multiple times in our life. Um, an example would be, so let's say we've got uh, the progress moon goes into Aries, right? So it, it came out of Pisces and moved into Aries. So with this progressed moon in Aries, you might experience, um, maybe you're feeling more independent. Maybe you're feeling more assertive, right? Maybe you are focusing more on taking charge of your emotional well-being and your health, all right? Maybe it's having a more physical, uh, more impact on your physical health because, you know, you've got that, you're, you're bringing forth that energy of that Aries, that, that warrior, that, that momentum, right? Um, let's say your moon went into Virgo, okay? This could be heightened awareness of how anxiety might be impacting you. Maybe it is, maybe you might think about how it impacts your digestion because of the moon or how stress is affecting your immune system, right? So this period would encourage attention to your mind, body health, and the integration of practices that support emotional and physical balance, okay? So Basically, you know, wherever that progressed moon is, you're going to be looking at the sign that it's progressed into and what it represents and analyze it for that point. Okay. And then we have our ascendant progressions. All right. So as the ascendants pass through, the ascendant is it's marking new beginnings and changes in how you approach life. Okay. And this is going to reflect how you are evolving and who you are, your identity, which is going to bring a change to how you interact with the world, which is going to affect your health. Okay. So let's say, let's use the one we've been using. Let's go from Pisces to Aries. Okay. So you were in a Pisces ascendant. Now you're in an Aries ascendant and you're, you've progressed. So that transition is going to be from being, uh, in Pisces, you were probably very introspective. And, and you still intuition, intuition a lot. Where now you're in Aries, you're going to become more bold, more action-oriented. That mindset is going to be much more action-oriented. And so the shift is going to encourage you to embrace assertiveness and take initiative in, your, in the different aspects of your health. And so it could bring you know, new health issues to the forefront, or it might have you changing how you prioritize your wellness. Or it could be a time to reassess your health goals 
and adopt some new approach to how you take care of yourself. Okay. Let's think about it. Uh, let's do the same for Virgo since we've been using Virgo. So let's say your ascendant progresses into Virgo. Okay. So it's left Leo and now it's moved into Virgo. So you might become more detail oriented in your health routine. You might uh, be more, have more emphasis on the precision of diet and exercise and wellness. Um, this shift can lead you to being maybe more meticulous in how you approach your health to prevent illness, right? It could um, have you have something emerge that you have to put more attention to, you know, and, and do some adjustment. Okay, let's look at the chart. All right, so we have, again, Catherine in the middle. This is her secondary progressed chart in the and then we have her progress chart on the outside. So we have her chart in the middle, her progression outside. And I've removed everything except for the uh, luminaries and the personal planets because they are the ones that do the majority of the moving. All right, so all right. And we look at what she's got going on here as far as movements, all right? So her son has in her lifetime, shifted from Leo to Virgo, and now it is in Libra. It went into Libra about six years ago, okay? So we've had this journey from Leo to Libra, right? So as her son progressed from Leo to Virgo to Libra, now she's in Libra, which is going to be bringing her into more balance and a more harmonious approach to life. It's reflecting, you know, time when she's going to reassess her priorities, um, especially things that have to do with relationships, partnerships. It's going to encourage her, you know, to be more cooperative, to be more diplomatic. She's going to want a lot of peace in her life and fairness, right? Health wise, this is going to bring in the importance of her to balance her health routines. She's going to find herself focusing on creating harmony between her work and her personal life in making lifestyle changes that pro pro make a priority of her wellness and her relaxation. She's going to find social interactions and relationships play a very significant role in her personal well-being and, it's, and helping her maintain her healthy boundaries and her fostering support of connection with people are going to be very essential to her being healthy and to being well. All right. Um, this would be a, a time when she's going to find herself maybe joining wellness groups or starting to attend more uh, classes with friends. Uh, social settings are going to be part of her health. Um, you know, she's going to, they're going to enhance her health. So she's going to like doing exercise and things more socially than she had in the past. Okay. Um, we have her son sextile Mars. Okay. Which you can see going on here. Okay. That sun, that progressed sun sextiling the Mars shows that you're looking at vitality and energy levels. Um, you're looking at a boost, all right? And confidence and motiv motivation is this is giving her uh, her the ability to pursue her health goals and have enthusiasm and assertiveness that she's got going on. It gives her the ability to have proactive health steps, all right? It's in her 12th house. So she's learning things about her health that she may not have known in the past. She's got new things coming out that she might not have known about her body and her health, okay? So she's she's being driven to engage in physical activity. She's being, this energy is being channeled to her to make decisions to improve her physical health and to build her strength and her endurance, okay? Now, if we look at the progressed moon, all right, in her chart, we are together. So that 
they are in the exact same position. Goodbye, Carla. Oh, no, goodbye, not goodbye, Carla. Goodbye, Catherine. Sorry, Danielle. These move so fast, I can't see who's going. I'm going to quit paying attention to what you guys are saying. <laughs> so let's go back to her progressed move. All right, so she has her progressed move. And it's it's come back through. All right, so um, her progressed moon in Taurus is suggesting that this is a time of emotional stability and grounding for her. Right? This gives her a sense of security and comfort. It gives her the ability to focus on self-care and to nurture her physical body, right? Um, this period is going to prompt her to prioritize physical comfort, such as a healthy diet and regular exercise. This is emphasizing steady, consistent health habits to enhance her well-being. And this is connecting her with, uh, with nature and in making her really have the desire to indulge in sensory pleasures that support her relaxation and stress reduction. All right. So she could find herself wanting to spend more time outside, wanting to spend her more time in nature, wanting to do things to, that will give her grounding and to reduce stress. Okay. Um, she has, of course, this aspect of conjunction going on here, which indicates this. Um, This reset, you know, she's got a reset occurring here. Her, she's resetting her health. She's resetting what's going on. Um, she's she's in the final quarter before she has a new moon in this chart. Okay, um, she's got a square going on here to her natal Mercury which is in Leo, um, that says she might have some mental stress going on right now or communication challenges that are affecting her emotional health. Um, this is a really good time for her to focus on that re on that rest and re reflection, which is what she has been doing. Okay. Um, if we look at her ascendant, all right, we're looking at the transiting ascendant, which is here. It's in Pisces currently. Her natal one was originally in Capricorn. All right. So um, she's been through Capricorn. She's been through Aquarius. Now she's into Pisces. So as this progresses, this takes her into um, being more intuitive and compassionate in her way that she presents herself. Okay. Uh, she might have started off being very structured and disciplined and then being very based in, you know, in in wanting to be part of uh, things that were um, group based, um, socially based, um, societal improvements, societal things, um, you know, making a difference in humanitarian things. Now she's moved into this Pisces, which is is intuitive and compassion. That's how she's presenting herself. And this is giving her a time of increased sensitivity and empathy, and it gives her ability to um, understand how she's interacting with others, and it gives her the chance to perceive her own health needs more in intently. And so this is a period where she is beginning to feel more in tune with her emotions and spiritual health. She's focusing on a holistic health practice. She's trying to bring her mind, body, and spirit together. Okay. She's got the ascendant squaring this ascendant, her her progressed ascendant is squaring her um, natal Mars, which shows a challenge. Um, this shows that she um, that she that an impulsiveness or being uh, or overexerting things of that nature could affect her physical health that she it could cause her overexertion or stress related health issues so she has to prioritize a balance in her activities um 
um, you know, so she's got that that issue there where she's got to figure out, you know, how to um, incorporate regular breaks into her routine to prevent burnout and make sure she's listening to her body and not to push herself beyond her limits. Okay, so that's progressions. Now let's quickly look at the impact of solar and lunar eclipses on health. Okay, I'm gonna clip through this because I am over time. All right, so we know, okay, that um, both of these are uh, potent celestial events in astrology. Um, they're known for their capacity to catalyze significant life changes and awakenings, right? And they occur approximately every six months, you know, during the our eclipse seasons. And so these events can act as triggers for health events. Um, they might illuminate a path to healing, or they might highlight an area of vulnerability. So it's important that you understand kind of the influence of eclipses on the health to kind of examine not just the event, but also looking at the houses and the signs activated in an individual natal chart, okay? So if we look at the solar eclipse as a health catalyst, okay? Basically, when you are looking at an eclipse, we are looking at the alignment of sun, moon, and earth, okay? And it creates this really powerful energy that disrupts the normal flow of daily life and so it's encouraging us to pause and reflect on an area that's going to need transformation. So an example of this would be, let's say, all right, so during a solar eclipse, you've got the interruption of the sun's light, which is symbolizing this momentary pause in our routine. And it's providing an opportunity to reset and realign with our true intentions and our health goals. So a solar eclipse, because it occurs approximately every six months, each time is going to highlight a different area of your natal chart and life that during this period of time is going to be ripe for in introspection and to start new things, particularly concerning that area of health. Okay. So let's say you have a solar eclipse in your sixth house. Okay. So it might, you might feel this urge to address a health concern. Or maybe you feel this urge to adopt a healthier habit. Or maybe you start rethinking how you approach, how you're taking care of yourself. Okay. When we're looking at health, a solar eclipse is going to mark the onset of a new chapter and it's gonna initiate a significant shift in how we approach our physical and mental well being. Okay. So basically, they're going to either be the dawn of a new health chapter, or they're going to reveal a hidden health issue. They're gonna illuminate something that's not seen or they're going to um, just bring about this sudden awareness of a health issue that maybe you've been ignoring, okay? So those are basically the things that will, will happen. So you're looking at an um, example of a new beginning. Uh, let's say that you get, we've got a, a maybe during the last solar eclipse, you had this sudden urge to quit smoking and to start having a healthier diet, right? And so this eclipse energy is going to support this decision and provide the motivation and the push to take the steps you need towards this, okay? So it gives you that opportunity to kind of um, assess your current health practice and determine what changes are going to be needed to have optimal wellness for the future. All right. Um, as far as the unseen, it might, um, you know, like I said, maybe you have some health issue that you, you've you ignored and it brings it forth and says you can't. You, maybe you've, uh, you've been dealing with 
like issues of being persistently fatigued, or maybe you've got these unexplained headaches all the time. The eclipse energy is going to encourage you to seek some medical advice that's going to lead you to some kind of diagnosis that's going to allow you to address this problem more effectively. So basically, it's going to encourage some kind of, of preventive care. It's going to bring, back, uh, bring about a revelation that's going to highlight the importance of, of managing something that you've had wrong. Okay. Um, foot with, yes. Remember, you want to go with, think about the, what we've done in the past. Um, when you, whatever zodiac sign is aligned with that point, be it send it sun, moon, um, you're going to want to look at the body pieces that are attached. And then if it's in, well, it, it could be in any house, but if it's in one, six, eight or 12, it becomes even more significant. So then you're gonna wanna analyze the possibility of those things occurring in with the meanings of those houses in health, okay? All right, so basically when we go through these issues, um, like I said, our, the impacts of health are going to be with the solar return, uh, initiating something new, um, hiding an issue or it could be bringing about some kind of transformation in mental or emotional something you've got going on it could trigger um something that impacts you mentally or emotionally in your health over overall um let's say example um let's say that you finally confront anxiety about a specific health issue that you've had. And it leads you to go, in, go to some kind of therapy or some kind of counseling that helps you manage and overcome the fear that you've had. That would be an example of a psychological renewal or a shift, okay? All right, let's look at... Uh, again, we have Catherine here. Um, I her to, um, I went through her solar eclipses, and I found a um, a solar eclipse in the eighth house, eighth house in her chart. Uh, it occurred on August the eleventh of nineteen ninety nine. Okay, so at this moment, for Catherine, for Catherine, we're taking you back to August of nineteen ninety nine. All right. This eclipse in that eighth house might have highlighted some kind of psych psychological healing or some kind of deep transformation that would have helped her address and heal some underlying psychological thing that was contributing to a physical example, a physical syndrome, syndrome some symptom or something that was brought forth. Um, like, um, Looking at her chart, you've got the sun and mercury involved. So this could have been a conjunction that might have intensified her focus on identity and self-discovery. She might have experienced a renewed self of self, you know, a renewed value of self. It might have helped her to redefine maybe some health goals or some health priorities. Um, it might have caused her to embrace more of her authentic self and initiate some new health practices that were more aligned with who she truly was. It would have been a good time for her to set some new personal goals or let go of a habit that wasn't serving her anymore. This could have marked a turning point that man for her managing some kind of chronic health issue. Maybe she explored some new therapy or new, some new something that addressed a root cause of some long-term problem she had had, okay? Could have been any of those kinds of things going on in her chart. Okay, so that is kind of the essence of what's going on, all right? Um, there's, I mean, if we look at in the different areas, um, it, it could have, this could have been, because we're looking at eighth house, uh, this might've had a focus on sexual health, 
This might have had something to do with sexual health concern or an issue related to intimacy or relationships. Um, you know, could have made maybe a pregnancy because she's got Jupiter in the in the fifth house at the same time and Saturn. You know, uh, could have been any of those kind of things. So, you know, but you're looking at this could have been a time where she would have been having open open communication about something maybe that had to do with sexual health, intimacy, um, and any concerns that were addressed through it with honesty and understanding. Um, this could have been a time when she had some deep-seated fear that came forth. Um, there was something that was holding her back that had to do with some vulnerability or some loss. And this gave her the ability to process the emotions to come out stronger and more resilient. All right. There are lots of possibilities. You know, you, you would have to sit down and, and work with her one-on-one -on -one to get through all the possibilities. But you'd be going back to that time and trying to look at what had occurred at that point. Okay. Um, I also pulled up a solar eclipse for her on December the 4th in 2002 in the 12th house. Okay. Could this have been finance? Yes, this could have been financial, like an inheritance. Yes, it could have. Um, now, this one in the 12th house, we're looking at um, this could have initiated um, some kind of healing or spiritual renewal. This might have been when she started on a deep healing journey. This might have been when she addressed some hidden emotional issue. Um, you know, maybe this was when she was drawn more to meditation or some kind of therapy or some kind of spiritual practice, right? So now we're in, in December of 2002. So we're going back 22 years. So, you know, go back to that point. Um, you know, it could have been any of these. We had um, the sun sitting on top of her, actually close to, it was within proximity. The node, the north node was very close to her, um, her Mars that she has in the 12th house. Um, you know, so, I mean, we could have been looking at um, all sorts of things there that could have been increased emotional intensity, the need to take some kind of action. Uh, she could have been confronted with something, some hidden health issue she didn't know about. Um, this might have been when she started finding solutions for it. Um, this could have been when um, maybe it emphasized some kind of preventative care that she needed to take that she had. Maybe it made her reassess her health habits and her need to make uh, you know adjustments to make make sure she was healthier in the long term. This could have some kind of psychological impact on her, um, releasing some outdated beliefs. Um, you know, embracing new perspectives on health and healing. Um, could have been travel, yes. Yes, could have been a foreign travel. Um, could have been letting go of some kind of limiting belief about her health and embracing a more positive mindset about health. Um, it, it, let's, once again, these are the, when you start looking at eclipses, you really have to be working one-on-one -on -one or working on your own chart um, so that you can really dig because you have to kind of dig into what was going on into that period to, to see. Now, if we were trying to go forward to look at them, we would, you know, you could go forward into a chart and get an idea of what was going on. Uh, getting healthy for a 2002 pregnancy. Okay. Yeah, so you can see these where they would have been um, moving into her life. So when we look at lunar eclipses, um, when we look at lunar eclipses as a health event, they are catalysts for emotional and physical release. They are prompting us to confront the results of past actions and encourage a fresh perspective on health and well-being. Right, and so this, uh, the the things that go along with um, lunar eclipses. All right, so these are events that are happening during a full moon. So we're looking at the sun and the moon casting a shadow. We're looking at the, the interaction between the sun and the moon, and it is the sun is casting a shadow on the moon, right? So that is our full moon. So we're looking at culmination, completion, uh, the 
positives coming out of a past effort. Okay. So when we look at these, you're looking at culmination and release. You're looking at um, emotional and subconscious patterns. Um, embracing uh, some new holistic approach to wellness. Uh, let's dig a little bit more into these. So we're looking at uh, maybe a purging. A, a lunar eclipse could have you finding yourself experiencing an emotional purge. So this could be a period where you get really deep-seated feelings that are closely tied to your health and your well-being. So it's a time suppressed maybe your suppressed emotions you're stressed or you have a trauma or you've got some emotional baggage that comes up to the surface and wants to be released okay so maybe you have uh, an example would be like maybe you've got some uh, overwhelming sense of grief as you finally confront it and you let go of this long held resentment or anxiety you get this emotional release and it's intense but it's really healing and liberating okay that would be an example um Maybe you have um, an impact on physical health. Maybe you've got like this emotional baggage that you've been carrying and it's been manifesting itself physically, right? Causing, you know, stress-related health issues, chronic conditions. And then you get to release these emotions and you it opens the door for you, this, this uh, full moon, to significant healing and improving physical health, right? Maybe you notice that, as you work through this, that you start releasing emotional tension. So things like tension, headaches, and insomnia, and digestive issues are gone. Or maybe you 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 find this mind body connection before. Okay. Um. You could. Um. Maybe you have something come to come to light. During a lunar eclipse, it's illuminated for you that maybe was hidden or neglected, all right? And you had to have the light come in for a resolution, okay? So, you know, that could be maybe, I don't know, maybe you've got the light's been shone on a health problem that maybe had been developing unnoticed or that you ignored. So this could illuminate it and often culminate in a law, you know, you might have had some kind of long-term health battle, and this might give you clarity on how to go forward. Um, you might, uh, this could be where you experience um, some clarity or understanding that makes it easier to address a health issue head on. Maybe you didn't have that ability. Now you have that knowledge and it makes it clear for you so you know how to proceed. Um, maybe you have some kind of sudden revelation you know, maybe you, you, you've got a sudden revelation about a health concern that, that has been quietly developed, you know? And so that you have this, all of a sudden, you know, some, you have this lunar eclipse and this, you get this revelation and it surprises you. You're like, wow. And it gives you the opportunity for maybe an early intervention or some proactive care for this situation, you know, that you didn't know. It brings light. Okay. So um, the last thing that it could do, a lunar eclipse, would be to symbolize the completion of a health cycle. So again, you're looking at, you, you've worked something, so it marks the milestone of your health journey. So it might mark the end of a cycle, you know, being the perfect, perfect time to witness the culmination of a health effort that you've been invested in. Um, this could be maybe when you see a tangible result of the hard work and dedication that you've made to improve your health. Um, it could indicate, um, it might encourage you to reflect on what's what you've achieved and give you insight into maybe what you need to improve on continuing to move forward. So it can give you a chance to celebrate a success and then learn from maybe any setbacks or challenges you experienced. Um, it also, um, could be working towards, um, because it's going into that uh, waning cycle, it could be giving you, uh, you know, uh, it, it you might have a cycle completing and another one beginning. So this is setting the stage for you to start moving towards a new health goal or initiative 
and encouraging you to build on the foundation slate, you know, during this culmination. So, I mean, it, it could go in a couple different ways. All right, so looking at, again, we've got Catherine's chart here and we're looking at, uh, this is a total lunar eclipse that occurred in her first house on uh, July 16th of 2000. All right. And um, so for her, uh, we are looking at, um, you know, this is first house health. So we're thinking about what this lunar eclipse in the first house might have triggered for her. Um, so again, we're in the year 2000. This might have caused her to reevaluate her physical health or vitality. This might have shown a light on her view, how she views her body and her physical well-being, prompting her to make necessary life changes. This might have been when she realized that her current lifestyle choices, maybe she wasn't eating the right way, or maybe she wasn't ex exercising enough, that were and they were impacting her energy. So maybe this gave her motivation to you know move forth and have more physical vitality. Um, we've got a square in this chart. We've got the ascendant squaring the Mars. So we could be looking at maybe this bringing increased energy and impulsiveness. Maybe she was making her take, you know, a, an action regarding her health brought on by the lunar eclipse. Um, it could have been um, maybe her redefining self image or her identity. She might've had a really strong desire to reinvent herself or change how she was presenting herself to the world. This could have been uh, illuminating her personal health challenges that maybe needed a little more attention. So this could have been a time when maybe she discovered an underlying health issue or pattern that she had to address. Um, this could have been an emotional purge, maybe encouraging her to release any pent up feeling or stress that might have accumulated. And, you know, giving her significant healing and personal growth. Um, it might have given her um, insights into her emotional landscape and how it affects her health. Could have been a lot of things, right? And then I also have a total lunar eclipse um, in her uh, chart that occurred uh, in 1993, in November of 1993. And this is a sixth house. So we're looking at um, a lunar eclipse in a sixth house. We'd be looking at health and daily routines. So this could um, be a culmination of efforts related to her health and well-being. It might be a time when you know you see the results of her diet or an exercise regime for the last six months. It might reflect on how these choices have been good or not been so good. Um, it's when she started going to her homeopathic doctor. Okay, um, it could be, um, let's see. It could be trying to think of different things that it might be uh, with our sixth house. Um, she might've had a motivation maybe challenges by increasing her workouts or tackling new health goals it might have made her you know want to balance her energy to not be overexerted um it might have um uh, maybe led her to digging in and learning about some new thing um that gave her understanding into what she needed to do for the future. Like maybe she needed to enroll in a new nutrition class or explore an alternative health practice, which sounds like what she did or uh, enhance, you know, her overall approach to health. Um, you know, you've got a lot of things going on here um, that it could, it could be. Uh, maybe she, with it being sixth house, Started, you started going to acupuncture, acupuncture as well. So, I mean, it, you, it 
this could be also, it could be her reevaluating her daily routines and accessing it, how her daily habits support her overall health. Okay, this clip might have, have highlighted the impact that her work environment has on her health and suggested her changing things that might improve her health. Okay, things of that nature. Right. And with that, I am to the end. And I apologize for going over so much. <laughs>